Hello. It is difficult trying to adjust to this new way of living, of social distancing, um, but it is ironic because when it comes to wanting to introduce our puppy to new things at home or outside in the environment, distance is our best friend because we want to introduce things slowly, at a distance and at our puppy's own pace based on, as well, their confidence level and their personality. And you might not um, be able to identify those two things, their personality and their confidence levels, very clearly at this stage if you've just brought a new puppy home. But it's important that we build trust, we create uh, a, a way of introducing our puppy to things that is consistent and predictable um, and also not scary from our puppy's point of view. We take for granted all of the things that we interact with every day. We don't see a slamming door as being threatening. We don't see noisy traffic going past as being threatening or the postman going past as being threatening. Trees or wind blowing laundry on a line, that doesn't seem threatening to us. But from our puppy's point of view, that's something that they might not have seen before. So we need to introduce our puppy to those things very gradually. And we need to make it uh, make that situation associated with things that are pleasant. So the best way to do that is to have lots of tasty treats around and reward our puppy after we've started to introduce them to that new situation or environment or object or surface um, at that time. So we're introducing our puppy and then we're rewarding them with a nice tasty treat. So for example, what can we do starting at home? So there's simple things that you can do like setting up a little obstacle course of different household items that your puppy's going to come in contact with every day. Scatter some treats around and let them investigate it at their own time. Now if you've got a vacuum cleaner, of course, you want to do that in different steps because you want your puppy to be used to the vacuum cleaner, just seeing the vacuum cleaner, but you also have to um, gradually introduce your puppy to the noise of the vacuum cleaner and that's going to be the same sort of thing with other things like the lawnmower or whipper snipper, um, also the sound of a dishwasher, the sound of a phone ringing, all of these different sounds including the, the you know sounds of pots and pans and a busy noisy kitchen. It's also important that you look at the surfaces as well. So you might have tiles in one area of your house and you might have carpet upstairs. And of course, from your puppy's point of view, they're very, very different when they're walking on them. So you need to take that into account as well and introduce your puppy very slowly and in a way that's very safe and um, consistent and predictable, but also in a way that you can build trust in them as well. So nice and slowly and making it very pleasant for them in the form of having some nice tasty treats to reward them um, when they're interacting with that surface. Now, another thing is um, gentle handling and promoting calm behaviour when you're handling your puppy. And a good way to, to do this, and I do have a video, you might see the, you might see the link in the eye icon just on the right of your screen, have a click on that and have a look. But it's important that you also understand canine body language clues associated with stress, fear and anxiety. So it's important that you understand that. Why? Because you need to know when you have to pull back because you're pushing your puppy too far too fast. And so it's important that you understand when your puppy's not feeling comfortable and when you need to intervene for them and remove them from that situation in a calm, safe way. So the other thing that you can do, it's a little bit tricky because the rules are changing, but from the perspective of this video today, before any changes happen with respect to what we can and can't do, other people and other dogs, this is a really, really great time for you to even listen out for when the postman's coming, pop your puppy on leash and just walk just a little way down the street so when the postman's going past you've got some distance between you and the postman and when your puppy looks at the postman you can reward them with some praise good puppy or you can even give them a treat and that way you're creating pleasant associations and helping to socialize your puppy to that noise now i'm just going to flash up a template here that um, focuses on helping to socialize our puppies in a number of ways depending on what the circumstance is and as you can see there's all different categories and so this is really good now of course you're not going to get a chance to do this in this in this situation of of you know the under the situations that we're living in now but it's all about just thinking of innovative ways 
to try to extrapolate from this list and see if you can, you know, you can get some ideas into your routine um, just every, for everyday situations in a routine for your puppy. And one really interesting way is if you've got a bike and you've got a bike helmet or you have some uh, Halloween costumes that your kids get dressed up in, put those on and just wander around the house and just drop some treats for your puppy when they're following you. And you're creating pleasant associations with those different costumes and the way can, people can look in different clothing. And if you have like a, you know, a, a fake beard or, or even a, a big floppy hat or sunglasses, you can put those on and you can even ask your partner or your husband to put those on. And that way you're actually doing a training session. It sounds funny, but you're actually doing a training session and you're helping your puppy to, um, to be comfortable with seeing people that are wearing glasses, um, that might have a hat on, that might be wearing a motorcycle helmet, that might be wearing um, a bicycle helmet. And that's the other thing as well. Outside, you can also help not just with socialising your puppy to noises like the postman or things like that, but also other things that could be seen as a bit scary from their perspective. And one of those things are skateboards. Um, so if you have a skateboard, then, you know, put some treats on it for your puppy to investigate and have a sniff of the skateboard. And then you might just push it back and forward gently and then drop some treats or give your puppy some treats while you're doing that. And then you might actually just push it away a bit of a distance and then see what your puppy does and just let them make up their own mind whether they want to interact or not. And then you might be able to extend that um, to having a game and playing a nice activity with your puppy at one end of the driveway while somebody else is on the skateboard at the other end and that way at the other end of the driveway and that way you're getting your puppy used to not just the noise of the skateboard but also seeing it in the way that it actually moves and then you can close the distance over time but it's important that your puppy's engaged in an activity uh, and that your puppy's being uh, socialized to that object in small steps at their own pace and so once again understanding their body language and when they're not comfortable in a situation is extremely important now the other thing is around um, mimicking veterinary visits so of course they're going to be limited to when it's essential to see your vet and of course vaccinations for puppies is essential because we need our puppies to be protected from diseases um, and of course diseases of global significance so there's really a really great way that you can actually mimic um, being in a veterinary surgery and that is you know sort of using some scales and using um, those scales that you have at home as a different surface for your puppy to for example using your follow the hand technique as you would in mat training but asking your puppy to step onto the scales and doing a clicker training session that way. So in that respect, you're helping your puppy to not only step up onto a different surp surface, but you're also helping to mimic a situation that they might be doing you know, in the future sometimes at the veterinary surgery. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was socialising our dog around food. Now, it's really important that um, we do this carefully. Now, I've seen a lot of Facebook posts and many of them are saying, pick up your puppy's bowl while they're eating, drop some treats in it, then put it down on the ground. Do this a couple of times a day. Um, other things to do is make them stay, make them wait um, when you've put the food bowl down. Don't do that to your puppies and don't do that to your dogs. The reason why is because it's frustrating and confusing for them. Once you've put that food on the floor, that's a signal that your dog should be allowed to eat in peace without anybody coming over, playing in their food, dropping treats in, moving the bowl, leave them alone. If you don't put your puppy or dog in positions where they feel frustrated or threatened uh, because somebody's coming over and interrupting them when they're eating, then if you're not putting, your, putting them in that position, then you're not going to have any problems with resource guarding. Now, resource guarding is little bit of an outdated term if you like and really we should be looking at it from the perspective and the concept of our dog's resource holding potential and I outline that in a review of Dr Jackie Lee's um, presentation that she did recently last year at the Small Animal Veterinarians Conference at the Gold Coast so have a look at that the icon should be there in the right hand side of the screen. So don't do that to your puppies and I just want to illustrate that with a video. 
So let's have a look at this video. Lovely little dog. Okay, we've got a hand. And the hand's shaking. Right. Some food. A hand right in the face. Okay, so the dog's going, well, there's some food there. Oh, now I can have it. Don't do that. That's unnecessary. That's just creating frustration. Now, from a point of view, okay, from, from this post, their angle was to show how well-behaved this little dog, well-behaved this little dog is, of course, because, you know, they want him to be adopted. But look, don't do that. You know, just put the food down and just let your dog eat in peace. Um, so that's, that's an illustration as to why. And there was just a couple of little signs where that little puppy dog, that little dog was frustrated and a bit confused. And of course, having a hand thrust in your face um, when you've got a very valuable resource uh, right, right down there on the ground next to you um, is very confusing. So once you've put that food in the bowl and you put it on the ground, leave your puppy to eat in peace and make sure that there are no children around to interrupt and frustrate that puppy. So the, the final message for this video is to just look at how you can think innovatively in this changing time, in this new time that we're living in with respect to social distancing. And there are innovative ways in everything. We just have to look for those and adapt to our own situation. And I just wanna leave you with a final thought some innovations that I heard about this week with respect to COVID-19 and how we're um, seeing some positive, some positive things happening. So the first one, of course, is the innovation with the University of Queensland. And they they're in the process and very close to finalising a new test, which is going to be a serology test, which has a different benefit over the current PCR testing that we have at the moment. So that's a really great innovative um, innovative. Um, thing that's happening this week. Also, there's been some hard hit um, people that own winery businesses that have vineyards and they have been recently smoke damaged. They've had all of their crop uh, smoke damaged due to the recent fires. That alcohol that can't be made into wine for obvious reasons is now going to be made into hand sanitizer. So another way of you know, thinking outside of the box, being innovative, being visionary, but also being of service to others. And I think that's where we'll leave the video and we'll talk again soon.